Welcome to I got to click this. Okay, welcome to our session, uh, the virtual mock job fair and experiment that worked. We um, are going to describe for you what we did with this virtual mock job fair, what worked and what didn't. And we hope that maybe you could try this in your program. Uh, my name is Peggy Hardy and I'm at Heartland. We are all at Heartland Community College in Normal, Illinois. And I've been in working in adult education for 27 years. And I'm Sandy Hoffman. I work as the workplace readiness coordinator uh, at Heartland Community College as well. Um, I've been working with non-traditional students for 13 years and I've been an adult ed for a little over 10. And my name is Heather Huckstack Gonzalez, also at Heartland Community College. I'm coordinator of adult education student support. I work with students in transitions and I've been working at Heartland since 2012. So just about nine years. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, a poll, a couple polls here. Oh. If you could, can you all see the poll now? Yeah. If you could answer this. And tell us a little bit about, this will tell us a little bit about your program. So are most of your students working full-time, part-time, looking for work or not in the labor force? I'll give you a minute here to respond. How are we doing? We're doing pretty well, I think. Couple more seconds and then we'll end the poll here. Okay, so if we look at our results, can you all see the results here? Mm -hmm. looks, looks like the majority are working part-time, but there's, there's quite a few in the other situations as well. Okay, one more question here. So in your program, where do you teach career education? Is it um, integrated within your academic instruction? Is it taught as a separate class or is it both? Oh, the responses are coming in here, fast and furious. I'm doing the poll too, so. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's it came good. up on my phone. Yeah, a couple more seconds here. Okay, it looks like, it looks like uh, let me share the results. Um, most programs do both things. They, they teach um, career education as a separate class and it is integrated within academic instruction. Okay, all right. And that is kind of what we do too. Um, we're gonna tell you how we um, integrated this um, mock job fair into our classes. Um, but first, let's talk about career pathways a little bit. <laughs> so one of, one of our goals with our mock job fair was to help students think in terms of career pathways. And I know that that's what we all try to do. We try to help them think about how a job that they have now might help them lead to the career they want in the future. So we um, developed fictional companies which have career paths. And that's, that's kind of what we framed our mock job fair around. So all of our fictional companies had three jobs. One, the first job that would um, require mostly just a high school um, degree or an equivalent. The second job would require some sort of training. And the third job would have some sort of a degree. For, for example, our fictional trucking companies available jobs were dispatcher, which just requires a high school equivalency. And it's a really a pretty good job for someone um, at that level. I had a, a dispatcher come and speak to my class a couple of years ago, and it really sounded like a, a pretty interesting job. Um, the second level of job at the trucking company was a semi-truck driver, which obviously would require a CDL. And then the higher level job was a, a technician, which I, in, in times past, I guess we called them mechanics, but I'm told they're called technicians now, which would require an associate's degree. 
So we're hoping that students will, um, through this and through other education that we do, that they'll begin to see things in terms of career paths rather than just in separate jobs. So we'd like to have your participation for a moment in a couple of ways. First, if um, let's think together, let's brainstorm together of a company or a career field that would have three levels of jobs like this. Uh, uh, one that didn't require, that was like an entry level, one that required some training and one that required a degree. So if you could unmute and tell me an idea you have for such a career path, that would be great. Or you can put it in the chat. Well, I, okay. We could do that. I was going to do talk it, talk about it first and then in the chat, but let me pull up my chat. There we go. There's nothing in it. There's nothing. <laughs> Think of a, so something like the trucking company or um, certainly health, health fields would have those levels of jobs or um, manufacturing. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing definitely would have those levels of jobs. Somebody put that in the chat. Health fields. The health fields. If you, if IT. you, can, Technology. yeah, IT definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Logistics, picker, uh, supervisor, whoa. Yeah, I there you go. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing. Yeah, definitely manufacturing. And a lot of these career paths are, are paths where once you start at that entry level job, the company itself will help students move up the ladder. And that's always wonderful. That's reality. Yes, yes, yep. Ooh, early okay, childhood thanks. education. I didn't think of that one. Oh, yeah, because the entry level on that really would require just, I think, a few hours of, of college credit, and then mm -hmm. you can move up to a teacher, a, an, an administrator even. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely transportation. Yeah, um, you guys are thinking in the right, the right framework. And the idea we want you to think about this is so that you can maybe put this into your programs. Okay. Yeah, good. Thanks. Okay. Heather, you want to take it from here? Um, Sandy's got this one. She would, but it's mine. Nice. <laughs> so um, basically, we're really excited to share with you what we learned from the virtual mock job fair, um, but in, in how it could help your program, as I said before, or be infused into your program. But first, we'd like to start with um, how the mock job fair came about for our program. Okay, so the original mock job fair, um, as adult ed started looking more and more of like, great, our students are in our program, but what are they gonna do when they leave? Kind of that forethought of work. Um, we started a career connections class. And as the name states, career connections, we wanna connect our students with careers. So for our higher end students, um, we had them take this separate class and um, they worked on- Susan is in this one. I thought she... I'm sorry, what? Oh, I thought somebody was asking a question. Um, so we did things like um, dress for success and um, resume writing and all kinds of things that had to do with the world of work, what employers wanted and how our students could to sell themselves. So we decided that why can't, I mean, obviously, even our lower level students would want to find jobs. So we thought, why don't we have an experience that they can all do together? And so we had our career connection students make these um, bifold uh, fold or posters based off the 16 um, career clusters that Peggy had talked about. And each one had a mock employer and the three separate jobs with the three um, different educational levels that were required. And so we thought, okay, well, this is great. We can get all the students in, but does anybody even know what a mock job fair is? Um, so we sent out some vocabulary to the students, um, to the actually to the instructors, and um, asked them to work with the students so that they were, you know, that when they were reading the the uh, job descriptions, that they could kind of understand. Uh, like I said, mock. What does mock mean for a job fair? 
um, bachelor's degree. Somebody's asking for a bachelor's degree. Uh, many of our students, especially our HSE students who didn't necessarily like school all that much, um, they're not going to know. An associate's degree might be four years. A master's might be two years. I mean, so we kind of had to explain those to them and work with them. We also worked with them on questions that were appropriate to ask um, in, a, in a job fair. And um, for our um, Bessel students, our non-native speakers, sometimes it was just a matter of having them walk up. I would say handshake, but it's COVID, so we don't handshake, but introduce themselves. And um, and in order to encourage them to do that, we had them choose out of the 16. They would take five of the of the employers, the mock employers, and they would go to the booths. You can see in the pictures, they would go up to the, the different um, employers and um, either introduce themselves or ask questions. And then when they were done at each booth, they would get a, a business card. And then if they went to five, they would bring the business card up and we would give them a ticket. And then we pulled the prize out. So everybody who participated, you know, encouraging participation with the students. Um, originally, that meant like all of the adult ed staff, you know, we, we would be the, you know, and I was, I was um, a dairy farmer. I was a police officer. I was pretty much hospitality. Um, but then we thought, you know, the students know us. So maybe we should have strangers so that they don't not don't feel as comfortable. But the idea was that they were getting a real experience. And then that way, when they did walk into a real job fair, at least they knew what to expect. So they got that that experience. So that's how we started, but it evolved. So eventually we decided to make some updates to our mock job fair. Um, we updated some posters. Um, the ones that we had originally had were getting quite old and outdated. So um, there were some updates made and uh, making them more like reflective of the job market and actual jobs available and actual salaries and things like that. Um, and then also we started using volunteers from the community um, rather than just um, college staff, because we wanted to be able to better answer questions. So like Sandy said, we all originally were working at the different um, mock companies and um, students would come up and ask us questions, for example, about a dairy farm. And I personally have never worked at a dairy farm. So we were kind of just making up answers, which is not super authentic. Um, so we were able to find people that actually work in these fields and we're actually able to answer the questions and give students a more authentic experience. Um, so Peggy was able to find um, members from her Rotary Club and other people in the community who were able to, to serve as uh, volunteers there. So we had a really good thing going uh, with our updated mock job fair. It was really awesome for our students. And then 2020 happened with the pandemic. Um, we were planning on doing our mock job fair in April, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. So um, it was about two weeks, three weeks into the whole COVID lockdown. And we really didn't know what to do. Um, obviously, we couldn't have a face to face mock job fair with 50, 60 students in one room. Um, we couldn't have any students in one room um, during lockdown. So we kind of had to think about plan B. Um, and to be honest, 2020, we just canceled it because we didn't have the time to put into um, really putting this together um, in a virtual format because there were so many other things going on with 2020. But for 2021, um, we decided to try to take this virtual and um, we actually decided it, you know, quite a bit ahead of time so that we could put the time into it. Um, but we thought about, you know, giving our students a realistic experience, giving them that practice still. Um, and so many job fairs were going virtual anyway in real life. So we wanted students to be able to get that practice. Um, so we took all the good things about our mock job fair, um, took it to a virtual platform, which let us um, students that experience and then um, and gave them the valuable practice that they might need for a real virtual job fair. 
Um, and it turns out that they increased their participation, their engagement, their interest. It turned out to be a really nice thing. So we're going to tell you um, a little bit more about the virtual job fair specifically today. So the, the mock companies that we that we developed, I think we mentioned we started with the, the 16 career clusters that, that we're all familiar with. Um, but then we, um, as time went on, we weeded out some more on of the more unpopular ones that students were that were not that interested. And an, an example is, is the dairy farm. Even though we, um, after we started using community volunteers, we were able to get one of the largest dairy farmers in the area to come represent this uh, mock dairy farm. After the, after the event, this was still in the, the in-person event, he politely told us that students weren't really very interested in the dairy farm and there really aren't very many jobs available on a dairy farm anyway. So, okay, we got, we got rid of that one. And um, the prison, we had a prison and a hotel and those were also not very um, popular with the students. So we dropped those from our lineups. And we started developing fictional companies that were based on two things. One is based on career paths that are actually available in our area. And the other is uh, career paths for which training is available in our area. And uh, that, that seemed to work pretty well. So with our virtual format, we figured Zoom rooms, everybody's using them. And I thought for sure, if all of these job fairs were going virtual, there would be like ideas of what to do for a virtual mock job fair. Um, and I did a lot of Googling and found nothing. So I thought, I'm sure there's stuff out there now, but there was not when we were looking at it. Um, so we decided to use Zoom rooms and obviously our trifold uh, posters were no good anymore. So um, we used uh, Google Slides and the idea we were still using the, well, we did pare it down again. We went down to seven jobs or seven employers with the three jobs um, of varying um, educational levels. Uh, but we also needed to find short YouTube videos because we thought if the person can't stand up there and talk to the students for the whole time about stuff that maybe they know a little bit about or maybe they're experts on. So we thought a video that would grab the student's interest, you know, on one of the jobs. So we thought, okay, find some short YouTube videos that we can embed into the Google Slides, um, which when I first started doing it, bam, I mean, we could find these, Peggy and I were on it, we're like, these are great. And we found really great um, ones that weren't gender-based or stereotypical. And then came the trucking. Um, I don't know what it was, but I went to YouTube and Women in trucking, um, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't put it on there. So I, we ended up since we have a trucking, um, since we have trucking at the college, um, I took the promotional video from that one and put it in. That was much more uh, professional. Um, and then we allowed uh, students time to ask questions. Um, we did the same thing, like as far as before, um, pre virtual mock job fair where we sent out the question or the, um, the, the employers and the vocabulary. And then we're like, okay, how did they sign up? So a week before I sent out a Google form a week in advance, and then the students could sign up for their top three out of the, out of the, um, yeah, we had originally planned. And then we used the Zoom rooms and the breakout rooms for the students. So the week of, um, we had to do a little bit of prep uh, besides the week before and the actually months before that Sandy and Peggy were working on the presentations. Um, but the week of, we had to do some kind of last minute prep. Um, so we did get some community volunteers again to uh, represent the uh, mock companies, but we did uh, do some training with them just to make sure that they were comfortable with Zoom in the format that we were going to use for the virtual mock job fair. Um, so there was a training for them. And then the day of, we had to set up the Zoom. Um, we had one big Zoom session where we directed all of our students to log on to. And then we had um, breakout rooms for each of our seven mock companies. And the idea was that we were going to have 
um, one main session with kind of an introduction at the beginning and then um, three opportunities for them to go to different breakout rooms to talk to different mock companies. And so um, I was the host and I placed students into the breakout rooms for the companies that they chose. Okay. And then um, we had a bunch of co-hosts and one of them was doing polling in between just to kind of um, work on, you know, keeping students there and work on vocabulary and things like that and keep it kind of lively um, in between and at the beginning. And then um, each breakout room we had um, the the mock company um, representative was in there that did the presentation, but then we also kept a moderator in each breakout room. Um, and we used our instructors as moderators um, because they were there anyway. And so we figured why not? Um, the moderators really helped with a lot of different things. Um, they monitored the chat in case there were students that were, you know, maybe they didn't want to unmute and they wanted to just type their answers in the chat or their questions. Um, so the moderators helped with that. They were able to help with muting in case there were students with background noise um, that, you know, there's always that student that doesn't want to, <laughs> that doesn't want to mute. So they helped with that. Um, any kind of tech issues, they were kind of on standby. We didn't really have any, but we kind of let them know that they were there just in case. Um, sometimes with our non-native speakers, it's a little bit hard for strangers to understand them occasionally with accents and things like that. So we had our instructors there just in case they needed a little extra help with that. Um, it was also just to have a familiar person there for students just to make them more comfortable. Um, they kept it moving. They made sure that students were actually asking questions and not just kind of sitting there. Um, and at the beginning, in a lot of the sessions, they introduced the presenters. Um, we also asked them to record um, so we could see, you know, what was going on. And because we were thinking we want to see, be able to improve for next time. But um, a lot of those recordings, we don't think actually happened. <laughs> we never got any of the recordings. So that was one of the issues. Um, but so we had those moderators in every room um, just to kind of keep things flowing and keep everything, you know, lively. Um, so we do have a sample slideshow presentation that um, Sandy and Peggy put together, and I'm going to share that with you now. I'm going to have to reshare my screen. So this is an example of our med tech laboratory services company. Peggy, can you see that? I can, yes. Okay, there we go. So the like, you know, like Heather said, this is the um the slideshow that we did in the in the breakout room that was about the medical laboratory. And it starts with a video. Can you start that video, Heather? I don't think I can do that from here. There you go. Does the human body fascinate you? Have you considered a medical laboratory career? We asked medical laboratory professionals, what do you love about your career? This is what they said. Hi, my name is Dave Karen. I'm the Medical Director of Clinical Pathology at the University of Michigan, and I can hardly wait to get to work every day. And I get to work with some wonderful people, too. What I love about my job is solving puzzles. Every day, there's a new puzzle. This is where you can see science meets medicine. I like math and science, and I fell into this career, and I, do, I love it because it's ever changing and it's always interesting. It provides me with career opportunity with very challenges and very rewarding at the same time. Hi, I'm Suzanne Butch and for 40 years I was in the blood bank and transfusion service and now I'm in the Department of Healthcare and Quality Improvement. Now what do I love about my career? It changes all the time. 
If you look back over those 40 years, you'll see even in blood banking, there's innovation and change and automation. What a wonderful career. I really enjoy learning the new techniques and new technologies and testing platforms that are constantly coming into the clinical laboratory. And finally, I really enjoy mentoring students and creating the future medical laboratory professionals that will become my colleagues one day. We have fun, we love what we're doing, and we help people. What could be a better job? Okay, I, I will say that when we did that with the students, I don't think we had the sync up problem that we seem to have had this time. Uh, it seems like the, the words in the, in the mouth movement matched <laughs> when we did it with our students, but yeah. So if, can you advance to that next? There we go. Yeah. Um, Yep. So our three jobs in the in the med tech uh, business were the first job was a courier. And so here's just a description of of a courier. I actually, after doing this, I went home and told my husband, that might be a nice retirement job for you. You might enjoy that. It really sounded sounded pretty interesting. And, the, and there's definitely a need for um, this kind of this kind of work. Yeah, you can advance. And the second career is a phlebotomist. Now we have a phlebotomy certificate that we offer here at Heartland Community College. So that's that's always nice. And it is, Heather, did you say it's one semester? Weeks. What is it? 12 weeks, I believe. 12, 12 weeks, yeah. And then there's a, um, a, a state exam at the end of it. But really this is a, a medical field with a pretty low bar for entry and um, it's, it would be a great path to take. And the third one was lab technician, which is obviously going to have um, a bachelor's degree in chemistry or um, some field like that. So we're hoping that with this type of presentation, our students will begin to see that you could start at one level of job and move through it in the same career field. A couple of things I wanted to say about this. Um, one thing was that it was, Surprisingly possible, like Sandy said, to find short videos on YouTube about these careers. I was I was kind of surprised. It was a little harder to find some that were that highlighted diversity as nicely as this one did. Um, another thing is that that our student response to this presentation was was just great. Our like I said, we offer a phlebotomy certificate, and students had been presented with that kind of information before, but it seemed like presenting it in this context got results. And we had students interested in pursuing that phlebotomy certificate. And a, a third thing that I uh, wanted to say about this is that the job descriptions that I have came from a phone interview that I had with an HR person at a, at a local medical lab. And she was more than happy to help us develop these realistic job uh, descriptions and and talk to us about how much people in our area actually make in these fields. So it, it was, it, these slideshows were not too difficult to put together and I think they were really effective. Um, we had some successes with our, with this virtual mock job fair. One was uh, increased student participation. We noticed with the uh, in-person jo mock job fair that it, it was a lot of work and this was a lot of, this was some work too, I will say. But then on the day of, even though students had been prepared for this, we'd worked on vocabulary, we had worked on what questions they were gonna ask, students, particularly HSE students, frequently just stayed home that day and did not come. And it was discouraging because it was such a good event and they were just afraid of it and stayed home. Um, but, I will say that the, the attendance at our virtual mock job fair was astounding. Almost every student came and many, many of them participated, which was just amazing. Um, the interest that was, that was, that came out because of this, uh, because of this presentation was astounding too. We currently have students who are in the process of enrolling in our pharmacy tech program, our phlebotomy program, and industrial technology. And those, that interest was all sparked through our virtual mock job fair. Um, the polls that we, that we sprinkled throughout the, um, the, the event, I think were good too. They were, 
first of all, they gave Heather time to sort students into their uh, breakout rooms, which would have been like deadly silence. Yeah, it would have been deadly silent if we hadn't had these polls. But also um, that we had an opportunity for some vocabulary development there. Um, we learned that, <laughs> I think we learned fewer than half of our students came into this event really understanding that a mock job fair meant there were no jobs available. This was just a practice event. And so we were able to reinforce that, uh, that thought and some other vocabulary and things. Another success that I thought of after we put our slides together was something about the community volunteers. And uh, bringing community volunteers into our event, I would say had some surprising events or some surprising benefits rather. The benefit that we expected is that these community volunteers were very knowledgeable about the companies they were representing. And that was great. But um, another benefit was, for example, some of our uh, volunteers came from a local Rotary Club and it really helped that Rotary Club feel invested, begin to feel invested in our adult education program. So that when we came to them um, later with a request that they fund um, tickets to the Abraham Lincoln Museum for when we took our students to Springfield for Legislative Awareness Day, they put it in their budget. And that was, that was great. So now when we go to Legislative Awareness Day, if we ever have be, are able to have that in person again, which I hope that we are, we will be able to take our students to the Lincoln Museum. So lots of lots of successes from that day. So success, we're all feeling it. We, we we're debriefing after we're done. We're virtually high fiving each other. We're going, this is the best ever. We are so smart. And we were just you were just on this great kind of high, like, wow, they learned something. This is so great. But then we're like, oh, well, we think they learned something. But how did the students feel about it? So I put a, together a Google um, form. Thank you, uh, Google form. And I have to admit, I, I was, you know, we were feeling really good about it. But as I got the students' results there from the survey, um, I did a uh, from one to five, five being the best um, kind of polling. And eighty-five percent of the students said that they understand what the mock job fair was and what was taking place that day, which is huge. 76.5% um, thought it was a good use of class time and learn something new. And I mean, for our students to say that, a, a good use of class time, I'm like, and it's kind of above what, you know, they're not just sitting there and listening, they're participating, they're doing the polls, they're doing things like that. So that was really exciting. And then 50% of the students said that they would feel comfortable going to a real job fair in the future. And that was our whole goal was going, okay, if, if one of, if a job fair is available and that probably still virtual, will students feel comfortable? Will they know? And half of them felt that they, that this experience had done that for them. So that, that meant a lot, but I have to, I took a student quote cause it just, it, it spoke to me because of, it says this kind of practice is very helpful for people like me that are relatively new in the country. I appreciate the time to spend to prepare it. And I mean that, like I said, we were really happy about what we felt happened. I think we were probably more relieved because we didn't know what was gonna go wrong. <laughs> and we were so happy it all went well that, um, but the student response was really what was the icing on the cake for us with this whole experience. So um, like we said, it did go really well, um, but there are a few things that we plan to change in the future. Um, it actually went so well that we plan on doing it every semester instead of once a year. Um, but we now know some things that we want to change, make it a little smoother, a little easier on everybody, better experience for everybody. So the first change that we have uh, decided is that we're going to have fewer companies or fewer options for students to choose from. Um, like Sandy said, originally when we did our, our first mock job fair way back when in person, we started with the 16 career clusters, 16 companies. Then I think we pared it down to 12. Um, for our online one, we did seven. Um, and that was still kind of too many because students had to pick three. So we had um, 
them fill out the Google form, they said their top three, and then we had to figure out how do we get each student to their top three choices um, and make sure that they go to the three that they need and don't go to the same one twice and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we had to also make sure that each session had multiple students in it because we didn't want one student to be by themselves and feel awkward and um, it's just a lot easier in a group setting. So in order to do that, um, we were moving people around on our spreadsheet and some of our sessions ended up empty. And so um, we felt really bad because we had a couple of um, community volunteers who were there for that 15 minutes or whatever that we were using them and we had no students for them. So in order to prevent that issue in the future, um, in order to have full sessions, uh, we, we're just going to give students fewer options um, and do the mock job fair twice in a, in a year instead of once a year with more options. We're going to do twice in a year with fewer options so that there's fewer, um, fewer opportunities for those empty sessions because we want to really utilize our community volunteers, show them that we appreciate them. Um, and this way students have more options if they stay the whole year. Um, we also thought about the amount of time for sessions. Um, I don't teach math personally, but um, someone who did teach math didn't figure this out either. So I, I don't feel bad about it. Our original plan was, <laughs> our original plan was 15 minutes um, at the beginning for a little introduction and then 15 minutes for each of our three sessions. It'll be an hour, everything will be perfectly timed. Um, but we didn't really think about the time in between sessions that it would take um, for the polling and for me to move people around. So it turned out to go, kind of get a little long, a little more over the hour than we planned. Um, so we realized very quickly that um, something needed to change in order to keep it to that hour um, time, uh, time limit. So in the future, uh, we plan to, instead of doing 15 minute sessions, we'll, we'll keep the 15 minute intro um, but I think we're planning on doing 12 minutes per session mm -hmm. instead. Um, that'll give us kind of that three minute wiggle room to get people into their next session. Um, and also the 15 minute session did seem kind of long um, with some of the groups, um, depending on the who the mock uh, company representative was, some of them got done very quickly. Um, and some of them, they didn't quite take the 15 minutes. So most of them got done, you know, before that. Um, and so we figure we can just have a little bit shorter presentation, more time for questions, and then at that 12 minutes, just get them moving on um, so that they keep the session or keep the session to an hour and get students, you know, in and out. Um, another change that we decided was to have the video first in the session before explaining about the jobs. So the presentation that you guys saw today, that was the new and improved version. Um, the way we did it in our um, virtual mock job fair in the spring, they kind of explained the jobs before they showed the video. And so um, we decided that having the video first would kind of be that hook to get the students attention and get them kind of excited about, you know, the jobs and, and asking questions. There's also a couple other little technical issues that we realized later on, um, or I realized uh, later on. One of them was my lists for my breakout sessions were not alphabetized. And I realized that with Zoom, if they had been alphabetized, it would have made it so much faster. Um, so it was just a tiny little change that if I would have planned ahead and alphabetized that, it would have given me so much more time um, or what seems like so much more time. Um, so that's something that I would do in the future. And then we had a little bit of issues with getting students into the Zoom. Um, students usually go to, like we have separate classes and we wanted all of the classes to go to one Zoom link. And so we're just planning on having um, instructors kind of stay in their class and redirect students so that nobody gets lost. Um, just to make sure that, you know, everybody, you know, maybe they didn't see their announcement on Canvas or maybe they didn't remember um, their, their teacher told them last week that we're going to have a different Zoom link, something like that. 
So we're going to have teachers kind of redirect people to the right, um, the new Zoom link. Um, the last thing uh, about future change, it's not really a change, but we had some technology issues. There was um, an issue with trying to test sound. We thought we were going to be all fancy um, and it didn't work, but it wasn't a big deal. So one of the lessons that we took out of this was, you know, check your technology, but if there are issues, like if it's not that big of a deal, don't sweat the small stuff. We learned very quickly that, you know, that little sound thing, it wasn't a big issue. Students could still hear us talk. So we're like, you know what? It doesn't matter. Let's just move on and be done with it. <laughs> so that was a huge lesson that we took from it. So we hope that what you'll take from this is a desire to try and do this for your program. Um, so you, you know, you just start with a brainstorming session and uh, fictionalize some companies. Talk about, think about who is in your area. What, what uh, training programs are available in your area? I was really surprised at how, um, how willing HR people were to talk with me about the jobs available in their areas. I, I reached out, some of them I knew through a contact and some of them I just, it was just a blind email that I sent kind of describing what we wanted and that we wanted the three levels of jobs and what we were doing. And they, everyone responded to me and was more than happy to do a, a phone interview with me. It took about 20 minutes and we ended up with uh, realistic job descriptions. So I think you could probably do that in your area. I, mean, I talked to a I talked to a temporary service that specializes in manufacturing. I talked with a workout facility, the truck driving firm, the medical lab, a hospital. Everybody was just really happy to talk with me. Um, and then, so you can recruit um, also volunteers in your area. Who are the service organizations in your, in your area? In our area, we have uh, a big rotary um, contingent and that that was helpful for us but maybe you have seroptimists or Kiwanis or young professionals um, 100 black men is a wonderful group we have used them and other and other things in our in our program um, use your contacts we we had a contact at the hospital who couldn't actually do this herself but she connected us with a wonderful young intern who did a fabulous job so just you know brainstorm and think about who you could use for this and, uh, and try it yourself. I did have one story that I was supposed to include earlier in our presentation, but I, I don't know, I got kicked off of the Zoom meeting and then back and I think I missed this. But um, this is an example of, of the, another benefit of, a, of having a mock job fair. I had once, one year I had a wonderful class of students. They were just fantastic. And we had prepared resumes for everyone, which is a job in itself. If you ever are a resume preparer, you know, that's, that's a that's a mountain to climb. Everybody had a resume, and there was a, a real mock a real job fair in our college coming up. And I thought I'm going to take my students to this. They are they could benefit from this. And so we all went over to the job fair, and um, three of the young men went in. They took one look, and they said to me, "Miss Peggy, we're going to the bathroom." And I never saw them again that day. And what I discovered later in uh, talking with them is the first thing they saw when they walked in was a table from our local police department who were there recruiting employees, but they were having none of that. And they were, and they just, it was like a trigger for them and they turned around and walked out. And I hadn't even thought of that. I knew that table was there, but I had not thought that way in regard to my students. And so, you know, that was informative to me about what our students think and, and some of their um, issues. But ha then having the mock job fair where they've walked through this sort of thing one time, I think would help them go into another situation and not freak out. Just gives them some confidence. Yes. Yes. So um, we do have a handout that is linked into the um, PowerPoint um, that's on the Whova app that um, I'll show you real quick. I got to reshare here. That does have a lot of really nice information and some help if you're thinking about doing this on your own or for your own program, sorry. Um, so it does have stuff um, like what kind of industry you would want to use and then training programs that your, uh, your in institution might have. 
and then an idea of three different jobs, um, a company name that you can come up with, and then contacts um, in the industry that you could either interview or ask them to even help um, be a representative for your mock company. So there's that. There's a little bit of information about how to set up um, the breakout session sign up um, on Google Forms like Sandy talked about earlier. And then there's um, a little bit of information about setting it up on Zoom with the breakout rooms. Um, Peggy also included her sample poll questions, sample vocabulary words, and some of the sample companies that we used. Um, and then our email addresses are here. So you can get this um, in the um, PowerPoint so that if you, you know, if you want to go back later and check that, um, you can find that. And then um, last but not least, this is our contact information. And um, if you guys have any questions, we want yeah, to- Yeah, when we said don't sweat the small stuff, we forgot the questions. You saw all the question marks at the end of it. We had that, we didn't get it in here, so. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, we wanted to open it up for questions and see if anybody had um, any more, anything else they wanted to know about our experience um, or anything like that. While you're thinking of questions or typing, I, I have one other thing I, I wanted to throw in. The, doing the polls with the students, I think had another benefit. And that was sometimes people come to a Zoom meeting fully intending to keep their camera off and not say a word. I mean, mm -hmm. I have probably maybe done that a time or two, but the poll is such a low bar for participation and it, it will pull somebody in to, to participate in the poll. And at that point, they're starting to think of themselves as an actual participant in the in the Zoom meeting rather than just sitting there. So I think those those polls drew some um, participation in. I agree. And we tried to keep them, um, you know, so that a variety of language levels could understand them, right. a variety of reading levels. So it really did help everybody participate. I'm not really seeing any questions. <laughs> A lot of people have those camera off type of participants, it looks like. <laughs> Not just us. Yeah, I found the more I can get my students engaged in the beginning of class. I had a student who wouldn't turn on their, their um, video. Oh, it was broken. It's broken, Miss Sandy, it's broken. And all of a sudden we were popcorn reading and they had to do role playing. And amazingly enough, her video was fixed. Because I started to see her. <laughs> Thank you. Well, if there's no questions, we can probably wrap it up. What do you think? Oh, the um, next job the next fair job is somebody. Fair. Uh, in October, in about a month, we need to get going on it. <laughs> Which we were just saying, this was really helpful for us because we kind of didn't remember what we did. So doing this presentation was really helpful to go, oh, wow, we need to get that together. So yeah, October, it's coming fast. We need to get on that, Miss Peggy. I know. <laughs> That's wonderful. I can't wait to hear about it. I might have to reach back out and... <laughs> maybe feature that in some different areas. It just sounds so neat and it's such a good opportunity for students in the community and everyone. So thanks so much for sharing. That was great. Thank you everyone for attending this 2021 Forum for Excellence session. Please be sure to provide feedback on the session. If you go to the Whova app and you find the session, then you can just click rate session. That would be great. We'd also like to take this time to direct you to our on-demand sessions. We have some really great on-demand sessions. If you go to the resources area on the Whova app and then click on-demand, you'll see some of them there. So please go ahead and do that. And also follow us on our social media platforms. People have been doing a great job. There's also some different engagement and giveaways that have been going on. So please make sure to check that out. And if you post something, if you wouldn't mind using our hashtags that are listed here on the screen, that would be excellent. So thank you so much again to our speakers. What a great session to start out the morning. And thank you everyone for attending and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.